Hey everyone, I'm Danica Fine with Snowflake, and I know what you're likely thinking. She's back again with a new Apache Iceberg release? Yeah, you're right. This Apache Iceberg 1.9 release might be following quickly after version 1.8, but that just means more new Iceberg features for you to be excited about. As you know, the Iceberg community is hard at work adding new features, improving existing functionality, and preparing for and finalizing the v3 spec. In this release, we'll focus on core changes, including new features and bug fixes, spec work, including the v3 spec and its implementation, and removals. So with that, let's dive beneath the surface and see what you can expect with Apache Iceberg 1.9. To kick things off, we'll focus on important core changes and new features. First up, a new set of partition stats APIs. As you may know, metadata and statistics are a key part of helping Iceberg function and efficiently conduct query planning for various compatible engines. For a while now, engines such as Trino, Dremio, and Hive have been asking for partition-level statistics on Iceberg tables, and the community has finally delivered. Specifically, in 1.9, you'll find a new set of tools for computing per-partition statistics in Parquet files with a new reader and writer. The next change introduces Auth Manager, a new REST client API that replaces the existing OAuth2 and SIGv4 authenticators. In the past, efforts to improve these two hard-coded authenticators were found to be difficult and error-prone. In particular, the OAuth2 implementation made it hard to work with external identity providers and had issues with token refreshes. The new Auth Manager provides a solution to these problems by providing a pluggable interface where the manager is loaded dynamically via reflection. The existing OAuth2 and SIGv4 authenticators have been retrofitted to integrate with the new Auth Manager. The most important takeaway from this change is that it provides better pluggability and extensibility for authentication. So in the future, other authentication protocols could be easily supported. Next up, we have support for internal data in the core module, meaning that in the future, metadata could possibly be written in Parquet. V4 tables, anyone? Prior to the addition of the Parquet and Avro internal readers in the previous release, the core module always leveraged Avro to write metadata and manifest files, effectively structuring the project around Avro schema and classes. Although this change is mostly internal, it's in the name of the issue, after all, as an immediate effect, users can write the new per-partition statistics that I just mentioned earlier in this release in Parquet. Continuing on in our core updates, I'd like to introduce you to a couple notable bugs and their fixes. To start, let's talk about equality deletes. Equality delete files can apply across a number of data files and effectively say to ignore a row in that file if it meets certain equality checks and the row was committed to the table before the equality delete was written. Simple? Yes and no. Recently, a user reported that equality deletes were not being applied during copy on write operations, meaning that previously deleted records were being, well, undeleted. Upon inspection, the issue was attributed to an overzealous data filter. Data filters help during query planning to determine which data files we don't actually need to read during certain operations. For copy on write operations, an ignore residuals flag is used to tell the planner to ignore these filters when a whole file is required to be rewritten. However, this logic was not applied to equality deletes, which had a similar filter code. This meant a data file would correctly be scanned, but equality deletes could essentially be optimized out of the read path as unnecessary. In copy on write, every row in the file is required, even if it doesn't match the filter, resulting in data files being read without their equality deletes and previously deleted rows being mysteriously resurrected. So that was the bug. Now it's time for the fix, which is to apply ignore residuals to delete filtering. To do so, the delete file index builder was altered to take in an argument for ignore residuals from within the manifest group. Then within the delete file index, if ignore residuals is true, we null out the data filter, similar to how this occurs in the manifest group itself. All that to say, now your equality deletes will work with copy on write operations. For our last notable bug fix of this release, we have a fix for incorrect partitioning specs being used during the Spark add files procedure. The bug is as follows. When using add files, the procedure assumed that the latest partitioning spec for that table was the one that ought to be used. Unfortunately, this isn't always the case. And if the partitioning spec that was assigned to the new files wasn't the correct one, suddenly you had bad files in your table. To fix this, the add files procedure now checks the existing specs for the table and chooses the correct spec for the files that are being added. And with that, we can move on to everyone's favorite part of these releases, the v3 spec. 
As a general update, the Iceberg community is still working to finalize the v3 spec. But let's get into a few of the spec changes that have occurred since the last release. The first change is with row lineage. And to start off, the TLDR here is that the community has decided that row lineage ought to be enabled by default as opposed to being opt-in. To understand the why behind this, we need to address some of the discussions that had previously been floating around with regards to row lineage. At first, row lineage was only going to be allowed on tables without equality deletes. The reason being that engines using equality deletes don't have an easy way of effectively tracking row lineage. However, it was decided that row lineage and equality deletes could coexist. And since theoretically there were no longer any limitations on which tables could use row lineage, the community decided to enable it by default for all tables. As part of the v3 spec, we've seen a number of new additions, including default values, geotypes, and variant types. And while you should absolutely get excited for all of these features, an important thing to keep in mind is that geotypes and variant types will not be eligible to have default values set to anything but null. Speaking of new types, the proposal to add geotypes to the v3 spec has now officially been merged. Altogether, this means that deletion vectors, geotypes, default values, variant types, type promotion, and multi-argument transforms has successfully been merged into the spec. Although the spec is still being finalized, some implementation work has begun on merged features. So it's time for a rapid fire update on the implementation work that's underway. Much of the deletion vector functionality has been added to the Java Spark implementation. Nano timestamp support has been introduced with changes affecting Avro, Parquet, and Orc files. Variant work has begun for both Parquet and Avro. And finally, default values have been added to core. And with those exciting updates out of the way, it's time for one notable removal. Spark 3.3 support has officially been removed from the Iceberg project. And there you go. It's no wonder the 1.9 release is happening so close to the 1.8 release. There are a lot of great changes in such a short amount of time. It's exciting to see all of the work being done by the community to improve Iceberg, add new functionality, and begin to implement support for v3 tables. If you're curious to learn more about these changes or see what else made it into the 1.9 release, I encourage you to check out the release notes or take a look at the GitHub repository. I'm looking forward to seeing the Iceberg project progress even further and for all of the new features and future developments coming our way. And I hope you are too. See you next time.